Hello, my name is Jakob Ehonfeldt and uh, I'm from the history department and I'm going to teach you uh, in the history and culture dimension of uh, humanistic methods. My name is Alan Westerling and I'm from the Department of Psychology and Educational Studies. I'll be doing the teaching about interviewing in the field of subjectivity and learning. I'm Pernille Eisenhardt and I am from Communication and I will be doing the teaching in text and sign. My name is Fike Lump Thompson. I'm from Philosophy and Theory of Science. I'll be teaching argument analyses to cover that part of the course dimensions. This is a short video introduction for the course. Yes, and I will begin now. Yes. I will start by telling a little bit about the history and the aim of this course. It has been both a student proposal to get a course inside the method of humanities and also from the subject discipline it has been a demand that the students were better dressed in this area because we got very different uh, experiences with the students. Some had very huge knowledge in this area and some had very little. So from that perspective we would like to, the aim of this course is to get you to get an overview of uh, method in humanities, but also to get personal experiences with some of the methods in humanities. As Penil already said, we have um, prepared four different uh, courses for you. Each course is of course different since they deal with a different uh, sub-discipline, they introduce different methods, but they are more or less modeled over this um, general outline which means that they st all start at 9.30, they all end at 2 o'clock and at the end at 2 o'clock there is a little exercise which is a summing up exercise that you have to do on your own which, is, uh, it's not, which means it's not supervised by teachers. We will uh, vary our teaching but we will all use elements such as uh, short talks, not really lectures but short talks, exercises and, uh, and summing up uh, meetings um, with the entire group, um, but we will focus uh, our teaching on the exercises. Hello, I will shortly, sh shortly introduce you to the history and culture dimension of uh, humanistic methods. Uh, I will introduce you in this, di in, in this uh, particular uh, workshop uh, to methods of reading as they have been interpreted through the history of uh, the humanities. Uh, I find the, the, the reading meth re methods of reading to be crucial to any kind of humanistic studies. So in a sense uh, we, go very, we go back to the basics of what humanistic studies are about, namely reading texts, interpreting them, understanding them, and trying to setting them into relation with other aspects that we want to understand. So we will read texts in order to understand social or cultural or gender features of societies, but our basic question will be how can we actually understand and interpret a specific source as saying something about this particular phenomenon that we want to study. So what are the basic methods of knowing what texts actually mean? How can we, uh, how can we get knowledge out of them? What is set between the lines? Do we understand the particular language well enough to uh, uh, interpret them properly? And how have historians and philologists and textual critics uh, created knowledge out of studying ancient uh, texts and liter literary texts because they wanted to know something about societies or religions or histories. So uh, to my mind these basic techniques of reading, methods of reading and interpretation are crucial for the humanities and we will navigate them from uh, the end of the uh, 1700s and up until today. So we will try to study both philology, textual criticism and also modern uh, hermeneutic uh, practices. We will uh, read or study methods of reading through uh, an excerpt from the Thousand and One Nights uh, uh, fairy tales uh, and uh, look at that as a source uh, for understanding how uh, humanists have interpreted sources uh, through the ages. And now, Alan will introduce you to subjectivity and learning. In subjectivity and learning, we've chosen to focus on research interviewing. We haven't done so because we think that this is the only method that you will ever have to use in collecting empirical data. Maybe it's not the best method, but it's certainly a method that you need to know, um, if nothing else, than to be critical about others' use of interviews. Also, we know from experience that a lot of students use this method in their project work as a means of 
gathering uh, empirical data and therefore enhancing your skill, your craftsmanship in this area seemed uh, a very good idea when we planned this course. In teaching um, interviews, we will focus on your, um, your practical experience with doing interviews through exercises, but we'll depart from that and then discuss the relationship between the interview situation, what goes on when you're doing an interview, what you're interested in knowing, and um, the material that you comprise or that you construct from doing interviews. And it's the relationship between, between these three elements that are really the core of this course. And we'll use uh, most of our time reflecting on the relationship between these three elements. We've chosen a textbook uh, that is uh, Maybe the textbook about uh, interviews, at least about qualitative interviews, it's written by two Danes, Steiner Kvele, who's actually Norwegian, and uh, Sven Brinkman. Um, and um, we hope you'll enjoy it. And now we'll have uh, Penilla talking about text and sign. In the course about text and sign, there will be two uh, subjects. There will be focus groups and text analysis. We will examine how you can view text and sign, examine text and sign through focus groups. Focus groups are very good at producing meaning about uh, group uh, interpretation, interaction, norms, and those kind of things. We'll be making a huge exercise about food. It's going to be wonderful, and you will be doing it. And uh, we will also be working a little bit with the method observation, how to use observation in combination with focus groups. Then, in the afternoon, we will focus much more on text analysis in depth, about getting really, really close to text and sign and uh, how to interpret them. So, that's it. On the fourth of the uh, course sessions, uh, we'll be talking about philosophy and theory of science, and we'll be working more specifically with argument analyses. Uh, now, argument analyses is important to philosophy, of course, but it is also important to academic work in a much more general way. The reason it's important is that arguments give us reasons to accept conclusions and whether or not to accept or to challenge a conclusion is central to both academic work but also in a much wider context such as in the public debate and politics. So we'll need, try to take a closer look at what is an argument and uh, analyse the different components that make out an argument and how to test the individual parts of it. What does it mean that premises are true and how do we know whether an argument is valid, for instance? We'll also be looking at some of the more common fallacies that appear in uh, normal forms of argumentation and how to uh, spot them when they do occur. And finally, we'll be trying to take a look at how to approach an actual text, whether it be within, say, an academic article or uh, the public debate in a newspaper, and break down what's going on there by a series of easy steps to try and get a better grasp of it and find out really whether the argument is one that should lead us to accept the conclusion or not. So that's the overall point of the argument analysis bit of the fourth course session. I'll move on and say a little bit about the participation and uh, the workload and efforts of the course. Today, courses like this have an ECTS assessment, uh, which means that there's a certain number of ECTS points set aside and a certain number of hours of student activity associated with that number of ECTS points. The course uh, in Methods of the Humanities has five ECTS points, which corresponds to roughly one-sixth of a semester's work for a student. This means that there's 137 hours of work for a student, uh, which is rather a lot in a short period of, of the four weeks that the course runs for mostly. A lot of that is spent in preparation just reading the texts. We've estimated that reading the uh, course texts, the literature for the individual course sessions, will take approximately 16 hours per course session. Uh, that's quite a lot of time spent working with the texts. And this is because we expect both that it's in extensive and difficult literature, but also that the students are well prepared, so have not only read the texts, but worked extensive with them to try and grasp uh, firmly what the texts are presenting. Then of course there are the individual sessions themselves uh, which are about six and a half hours apiece. 
And then there's a final 40 hours of work, i.e. roughly one week of uh, student work for the presentation and production of the poster which uh, completes the course at the end. So those are the major parts of the course activity and the uh, majority of the hours that students will be needing to devote to the course. And now we'll move on to Alan who will say something about the learning goals and education of the course. We're trying to reach two aims with uh, this course. One is to um, train your skills to make you better craftsmen in the, in the field of humanities with the methods that we introduce. The other aim is um, to help you become an educated person in the field of humanities. So to build your general knowledge and insight in the field of humanistic methods or methods of the humanities and by that to really um, invite you to become a member of the educated community of the humanities. So that's the other uh, aim of this course is to train or to give you um, your an, a general uh, overall insight in the field of humanities and methods of the humanities. We'll say a little bit towards the end about uh, the poster session and the exam. I will now provide you with uh, some information on your exam and on the evaluation of this course in Methods in the Humanities. At the end of the semester you will be examinated uh, in this course through, uh, together with your project work uh, where, which will have two dimensions. One will be examining the Methods in the Humanities and the other will be examining your project work either separately or integrated. But as a preparation for that, we have introduced a poster session that will take place some weeks before the exam, where the general idea is that you get the opportunity to re reflect over what you have actually, what your outcome have be, has been of the course. Because the course consists of four uh, different dimensions that are all supposed to uh, relate to each other into the methods of the humanities. So we've introduced a poster session for you to be able to see the overall picture of what methods in the humanities are all about and how the specific dimensions are related to each other. Thank you very much and we look forward to seeing you in class.